So you've made the head, you've painted him, and it's time to get him out in whichever way that you need to get him out. So we'll show you how to get him out as an image or as a turntable animation, and then importantly, how to get him out as a 3D model with the painting so you can use him in programs like ZBrush and Cinema 4D and Maya and all the other 3D programs you might want to use him in. So last week we looked at sculpting a basic stylized head and that's this guy here on screen. And the last part of the video was where we posed him in this, you know, this he's kind of got, like, got one eye open and a bit of a sneer. So this video, um, especially this particular part of it, is about what we can do next with him to get him out to other programs. And there's a couple of options that you, you have to get one, the, uh, the image out or a render of the image or even an animation. And then there's also an option where we can get out the model and we can do something with that model in ZBrush or Cinema 4D or Maya or whatever other 3D program you choose. The second video, um, the one that follows this, will be for a little bit more advanced people, which will be if you want to then do something with that in ZBrush, for example, and we'll work out how to do something with the texture map and the, what we call projecting. So if you're into... A higher level um, if you're basically a higher level artist at this stage you might want to think about going and looking at that video after this one so getting things out first of all so what we before we do get anything out let's just check that we've got everything correctly so if you look over make sure you're in the uh, the menu here on the right and then have a look at the objects and then in there you can see you've got your camera image plane and your default lights at the top don't worry about any of them but we've got a head and you can turn that on and off. And we've got a lower teeth, which says lower teeth combined. So that's upper teeth and lower teeth combined into one. And we'll, we've got the eyes combined into one as well. So it's two eyes, but combined into one object. So we've got three objects making up this entire head and we want to export all three of them out. So before we export the model, let's just do some uh, let's export some images and animations. So to do that, go back and then down at the bottom here of the of the default menu, you've got four options in the bottom at the bottom. And the one we're going to focus on is the one on the far right, the little arrow with the square. So if we click that and you'll see you've got render, texture and 3D model. So we're going to focus on the render and the 3D model. So render first. So if we click render. And we've got lots of options here and you can scroll up as well as options at the bottom. So if all we wanted was a screenshot, we could just use export screenshot at the bottom. But say we wanted a turntable, you've got lots of options here. So you've got the size of the turntable at 720 or 1080p. So that's the size of the pixels on the, on the uh, animation you'll export out. You've got a framing option, which I'd suggest you leave until you know more about the, the, the scaling of, of, of what we're doing. We've got a tilt, which we, again, don't touch that until you know what you're doing. That would rotate the head around and give you a different angle, so we don't want that. You can actually just frame the selection like that, which I quite often do. And then the frames, we've got it set to 48 over 2 seconds. So let's set that a little bit higher. So let's set that to, uh, let's try 5 seconds. And that's going to give us 120 frames. So we've got everything we need there and just generate turntable. Now what that's going to do, it's going to work the head, um, going to work it around and render it all the way around and then we can save it wherever we want. So I'll just save it to my photo library. Let's have a quick look at what we've got. That's the one I did earlier. I've got this one here. And you can see that's just a 360 degree turnaround over five seconds. But well, because we hit framing, look what's happened. So what that's done is that's framed the model I was on. So be careful what you choose in that setting. So what we want to do is probably just frame the head. So you would click head as you go into the export and then frame it to that. So just be aware of that one. And you can, you can export any part of the head uh, or, or any framing of any part of the head. So that's the first part. So what about getting the model out? So the model is exactly the same. 
So we go to 3D model is the top one. It says geometry for use with 3D DCC game engine sculpting or printing apps. Um, and click that one and we get these options here. So again, we don't worry about the top um, camera image plane default light, but we do worry about the head, the lower teeth is already selected, and the eyes. What that means is we're going to export all three of them together. Um, they will be separate, but they'll all come out as one set. So we'll enter the file name as, very simply call it head01 for this test. And then the interesting bit at the top here is you've got three different options to export. Now let's start on the far right with USD. USD is a file format from Pixar. Um, and Pixar, basically you'll know them from the, the 3D um, stylized movies that they make. And, and basically if you want to export using USD, you'll be going into a Pixar pipeline for the universal scene description which is probably a little bit higher level than you need for this kind of project. So when you know that you need that, then you can look into that more. STL, the next one along, is stereo lithography and is used very much for 3D printing. And again, by the time you know whether you need that, you'll be a lot more advanced. So unless you absolutely know you're going to go into 3D printing with this head, then you won't need that one. You can import that into a lot of programs like Cinema 4D or ZBrush, but we'll we'll stick with the first option here, which is OBJ. And that's a very common file format across the whole industry, really. So OBJ will carry textures. It will carry what's called vertex painting or the painting that you see on this guy here. So let's click that. Just make sure when I click that, when I change it, as you can see, things change here on the, on the, um, the list. So absolutely make sure you've got selected what you want and then we'll export that. And you can save that to wherever you want. I'll just save it to files for now. And we'll pop it into models in my Forger app. And there we go, that's saved. So now what we can do is take a quick look at that in ZBrush. So if you open ZBrush, I've got my tool menu over here on the right hand side. Uh, if you can't find it there, it would be here, the top. So from there, we want to go into this one here, which is import. And from there, we can just navigate to the head and bring the head in. And you'll see it down here. I'll just let this little R will clear down any other things you've got open in ZBrush. Now the head is basically loaded in. It just needs bringing into the document canvas. So basically if we just drag and leave it open like so, and then hit keyboard T, or this button here, that makes it editable. And now we can move it around uh, and have a look at what we're, we've got um, available to us. Now the heads come in this bright red color because of the material settings over here. And that means it's set to default red wax. So quickly, we can just change that to something else. You can change it to lots of different options. As way loads of different skin like um, shaders here that you can try a good one as an average would be that one which is just skin shader or any of the ones that are called skin shader four or different whatever numbers your version of zbrush has um, it looks a little bit different than it does in forger at the moment because of perspective being off here so if we hit this button here or keyboard p that brings our perspective on and you can put the floor on as well exactly as you can in forger um, and you can see that we're now in a, a more uh, familiar 3D space. So we can see that, that, that we're sitting in the middle of the floor um, and we're in the same orientation as we were in um, Forger. Now, there's a way to um, see the grouping of uh, this model. Let me just shift and F will show us the wireframe. If you zoom in there, you can see it's all one color and that means it's one polygroup. So maybe we would want to split that first of all. So if we just go down the tool menu again, polygroups and auto group, what that will do is give us a group for each of the models. So we had two eyes, which were uh, basically brought together as one in Forger and the two teeth, but they're now all separate groups again. So if we now go into, close that one down and we go up to sub tool and we want to split that sub tool into groups and then that will group split 
all of them. So we've now got a head again, two eyes and the teeth up and down exactly as we started in Forger. So you can split it back down. I'll turn the wireframe off, shift and F again. So let's just merge these bottom ones again. So click the top one and go merge and merge down. Do it three or four times and then we've just got all the teeth and the eyes and the head. So the teeth and the eyes need to be probably a more of that plasticky color that plasticky material that we had in Forger. So we can go over here and if we find something called toy plastic that will change everything to that plasticky color. But if I keep changing it changes everything. It means it's not a permanent thing. So back to the toy plastic and then if we just flood that, and the way we flood it is we keep just the M on here, so there's no MRGB or RGB, so that's, that's material and RGB colour, RGB colour or M, which is just material. So we want material, and then we go, oddly in ZBrush, it's actually done through the colour fill, and then you just fill object. Now you can't see any difference, but if I now change to Skin Shader 4 again, you can see that the plastic has remained on the teeth and the eyes. And that's one way that we can, basically, we can flood certain models with that more plastic look. And there's lots of things we can change in ZBrush now before we go into any of the the, the higher detail uh, or the other higher, more complex things. So, for example, we could just go in and we could look at the light and we could add another light. And that would definitely help us with the look of the model. Or we could even go into something called light cap here and add quite more significant light. And that can be moved around up here and you can see now that that makes a, a big difference so or even we could change the color on that um, and start making it a bit pinker and you could start building up if you were going to render it in zbrush that's the way you would start it but that is essentially how you get your model into zbrush it's very very similar in other programs in the fact that it will come in like this um, but there will obviously be different processes to follow to to, to, to get it in now we will do another separate video that will show you what you can do to make texture maps and how you can make this a, a, a more usable asset when it's come from Forger. But it's slightly higher than this uh, introductory video. Um, so if you're not used to ZBrush, then make sure you've gone through this kind of video or, or, or more videos that you can find that give you um, all the, the tips and tricks of how to get to, get to this level. So we'll put a link into that next video um, and it will get released on the same day as, as this one. So it should, it should be there if you want to go and see it. Hopefully if you've, uh, you've got everything you need from the video now to go and have a go of this. Um, and don't forget if you do want to bring it in um, as a, as a different format, we've only done OBJ. If you do want STL, which was the other one, then that would be in here on the Z plugin import STL. But we really recommend just focusing on the OBJ now, which is the much more common one.